Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, tonight, we're going to be discussing toys for blind toys and games for blind children. Um, I'm Kimberly Banks, uh, second vice president of the NOPBC. Um, tonight, we're going to have with us uh, Michelle Murray and Sarah Erb, both NOPBC board members. Um, who they'll both be discussing toys and games for kids ages birth to 11 and we'll also have with us Emily and Richard Gibbs the owner the owners of 64 ounce games and both teachers of blind children. Um, please if you can um, if you can leave your email and a comment um, so that we can send you uh, we're putting out a newsletter with more information about webinars coming up and just all sorts of good stuff is going to be in that we'd love to be able to share that with you so if you could leave your email and a comment that would be great um, i also want to encourage everybody to feel free to join the nopbc um, when you join the NOB, nopbc with a twig membership um, each person will receive a copy of either jaws zoom text or um, jaws fusion for their for their child um, and that's a one year license of that program um, also just an fyi we'll be giving away five door prizes tonight um, so stick around we have some really good ones um, so i guess i'm going to go ahead and turn it over to sarah and michelle hello everybody hope you guys are doing well thanks so much for joining us tonight um, and we are just excited to share. We know the holiday season is upon us. And so lots of us are looking for ideas or family members are asking for ideas of um, games and toys and things that we can get for our kids for the holidays. So um, we hope that this evening is inspiring and fun for you guys. And if you have any questions along the way, feel free to um, just stop and ask us so we can answer them as we go, or you can leave them in the chat. Um, and then at the end of, so the way we're going to do this session is the first half will be the um, birth to 11 and then um, in about an hour we'll have a break, do some door prizes and then um, finish up with the older kids at the end. So <clears throat> we are looking forward to sharing with you. Um, and by the way, I'm Michelle. I live in Colorado and I have a six year old um, named Michaela and Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Sarah Erb. I am a parent of a six-year-old as well. Um, we just have a family of three at our house. And um, it's been a fun, fun adventure learning from observing our child who's blind. It's been really, really exciting. And just, um, I love nothing more than just to observe blind kids and how they interact with the world and how they play. So thanks for being here with us today. Sarah, you wanna start? Yeah, sure. So we just wanted to talk a little bit about um, like gift giving a little bit later and different ideas for gifts, but also wanted to talk about how maybe a blind child or a child who with a vision impairment or has some sight may play differently with a toy than the traditional child. And that's totally okay. Um, there's a lot of information that our our children who are blind receive from, you know, dropping a toy or um, listening to the sounds that it makes or learning how to learning how it works or learning how they can interact with it in many different ways. Um, and there's so much learning that happens by that process of learning uh, how they can use a toy in different ways, like a cup could be a hat or just all sorts of things. Um, there's a fun resource that uh, Michelle and I came across when our kids were little, and it's called the Loose Parts and Intelligent Playthings. And it just kind of talks about, there's a little theory that we're gonna, uh, a, a schema, which is like a chart of ways to kind of look for toys and follow your child's interests on um, different toys or things that what might be fun for them to play with, like activities, um, just basic things that you'd have around your home. Um, so that's something we'll post on the document later with this um, webinar recording. And that's kind of a fun way to look at what your child is interested in and then facilitate that need that they have, either if it's sensory concerns or something that they just really enjoy. 
um, like some kids might repeatedly throw something. And so you're like, okay, let's get something that's safe for you to throw, but also that you're enjoying and having a fun time and learning as you go. Um, so that's a kind of something to look forward to. And just talking about kind of the theory of play that our kids learn are learning so much when they're playing. I think that what I've heard is when a child is doing like schoolwork, there's, you know, a certain amount of learning that's going on, but when they're engaged and actively playing, they're doing that active learning piece too. And it's the learning is like exponential that they're getting while they're playing. So it's just kind of fun to be able to be here tonight and to be able to talk a little bit more about um, these different topics. Michelle, did you want to talk about maybe sensory type toys first? Sure, and actually it goes, the first thing that came to mind when you were talking about the trajectory and throwing things is um, my daughter has had a set of bean bags that I got off of Etsy when she was little. I mean, you could certainly make them yourself, but I'm not that much of a seamstress, um, but I worked with the Etsy seller. And so she normally just made them, each one was a different color on one side, red, orange, yellow, blue. And then on the back, it was black and white um, contrast patterns. But I asked her if she would mind making them in different textures as well as each color. Um, and so we had a satin one and a terry cloth and a velvet and a um, crinkly. And then she also put different contents in each bean bag. So it had a different weight and a different sound and a different um, feel when you threw it. And so we would play a game where my daughter would throw the bean bag and then she had to remember where she threw it and go search for it. Um, and she'll still play that. I mean, she's six, but we played different variations just with bean bags that are different textures. And, you know, like I said, there's colors and contrast um, for kids that have um, some sight, but it also has, you know, works on orientation and mobility and memory and search pattern and all these other things just by playing with bean bags. Um, and so that has been really fun. Um, <clears throat> another thing I really have found um, great for my kiddo is just having a sensory table. Um, oh, yes. Okay. I sorry. I saw the comment about the Etsy seller. I will find that when Sarah talks and, and I can certainly share that and add it to the list. Um, and honestly, just across the board, I have found several Etsy sellers that if I reach out to them and say, hey, you have a really great product. Would you mind modifying it slightly to make it accessible for my kid? More often than not, they have been crazy accommodating and amazing. And so I just encourage you, I've had a, <clears throat> a wooden puzzle that they added different textures to every piece inside a little inset um, and made a puzzle. And I think they even kept it on their website so that other people could use it. Um, I've contacted a seller who had, um, my daughter went to a Montessori school in preschool. And so we had <clears throat> little tiny textured print letter tiles made, and then we added the braille to it so that she could do the sensorial tracing of the print letter along with her classmates, but also had the braille, but we did a smaller scale and we did felt instead of sandpaper because the sandpaper was really offensive to her fingertips. And so um, if you see something on Etsy, just reach out to them and say, you know, hey, would you mind making a modification or working with me? And more often than not, they've been really great about that. So I can definitely give you the bean bag, um, <clears throat> the bean bag option and the other ones. Um, Polywog, I know is one of the ones that has been really great in working with me over the years. Um, some other sensory things is just having a bin. It can be an Ikea laundry basket or, you know, a plastic bin from Target or whatever and allowing your kid to get inside of it to play with sensory things. It kind of controls the mess. So, you know, dried beans or pasta or plastic beads, um, rice, <clears throat> you know, just different cotton balls, you know, different textures and allowing them to, whatever their comfort level is, experience that with their whole body and getting, you know, the sensory input and putting their toes in there. Cause sometimes I think um, kids who are blind are more sensitive to things being on their fingertips. And so um, touching them with their toes first can often be a little bit more palatable. Um, so, you know, shaving cream, bu bubbles and soap um, and water, you know, just any kind of act, um, you know, material that you have around your house, um, just putting it in a bin and giving them that chance to have kind of a defined space 
um, and you know, play and pour and scoop and all of that has been really great. You can also do smaller containers, but especially when my daughter was younger, I have this picture of um, her when she was maybe two, she got inside a storage bin and was laying sideways and playing with the beans and just liked to be in that cozy space because I think it just gave her a sense of where she fit in the world <laughs> when she was so tiny. Um, <clears throat> another thing that's really great is weighted blankets. And I've actually been super grateful that they have become a lot more mainstream. You can get them at Target and Walmart and you know, um, kind of any big box store. I even saw at Target this last week in their pillow fort um, brand for kids in their bedding section that they had a weighted um, lap blanket and it even had a hole that you could put your hands inside so that you could have weight on your hands or just weight on your lap. Um, and I don't know about you, but if you have kids that are doing online learning now instead of in person, um, that might be a great sensory input while they're having to sit in a chair a lot longer um, to have a weighted lap blanket. Again, you can make it yourself. We <clears throat> used to make them out of um, hand towels and we would fold them in half and sew them and then fill them with dried rice. Um, and you can even heat those up in the microwave and then it gives warm pressure um, or you can just you know, use it and adjust the weight. Um, I do recommend that you research um, the weight for your child's age and size and their weight because a weighted blanket should be adjusted for what their body weight is. So you can't just put a five pound blanket on a you know, 30 pound kid there's a scale. And so if you just Google weighted blanket for child size, it'll tell you what weight is appropriate. Um, <clears throat> and then also beads, um, sorry, paint, um, shaving cream, like I said before, um, and then doing things in nature, getting sticks and rocks and um, leaves and grass and just giving your kids a chance to play and explore with those things. Because sometimes when you come across them, in nature, it can be a little bit startling. So giving them again, a chance to, um, uh, oh, thanks, someone said it's approximately seven to 10% of your body weight. So um, for the weighted blankets, um, but with, you know, with nature, like mulch, you know, is a really different texture or the rubberized ground from playgrounds that you sometimes like shredded tires and things like that. Um, giving your kids a small amount of that in a controlled way where they can explore it and kind of at their own pace explore those things instead of just all of a sudden they're walking on mulch and what in the world are you asking me to do? Um, giving them opportunities to explore um, different na natural um, elements is also really helpful. Sarah, do you have anything else you want to add to that? Yes, so on the sensory topic, um, one thing that's been really fun for us, we did a, like a little sensory class a couple of, well, last year, and we learned about the different sensory inputs and we did it with an occupational therapist. It was like a class, a, um, a social skills class and mixed in with the OT component and they hadn't ever had a, a child who was blind be in that before. So that was kind of fun to um, just kind of see how they adapted it and everything. But I learned the value of heavy work. Um, Heavy work would be like having your child do maybe carry in the the grocery shopping from the car, and they're you know using their cane, they're using um, their navigation skills, orientation and mobility, and you know figuring out how to maneuver getting inside. But also, if you have a sensory seeker. Um, it's great to have, or someone that, you know, I, our child likes to jump <laughs> almost all day long. And so um, it's been nice to be able to have the heavy work component. And we've been looking for some toys that are things that are heavy. So some families will put, um, pack a little backpack for their child if they're like just constantly moving and need that input. It also helps with um, proprioception, another type of sensory input. And um, that's like filling your joints expand and contract and kind of that jumping or a child that might be really um, into like pushing on things, maybe pushing on walls or um, likes to run into things. That would be kind of that same type of thing. So finding toys that facilitate the child and honor the child's need for something has been really fun for us. And um, so with the heavy work component, 
we learned that, so we just got a, an Ikea bin, one of the blue laundry bins, which is like silicone and silicone plastic-ish. And it actually, um, we used it for a bath bin. We still use it for her. <laughs> she fits into it for a bath bin because we have a tiny, tiny shower. Um, so she likes to hop in and um, we sometimes fill it with water beads and just let her go to town and you know measure, mix, pour, whatever she wants to do, but she would just keep it in the shower. And then um, she uses it for a sleigh when she's pretending to be Santa. She uses it for, um, she'll pull a, put, a, put a bunch of like our weights, our weightlifting stuff in there, um, like five and 10 pounds and then haul it around, tie it with a, like a big belt, tie it around her waist and then drag it around the house. And that's all, you know, she's getting her sensory input um, by just playing and figuring out how, you know, physics work and all sorts of things. So. Um, different OT toys have been really cool. Um, we use them as toys, but they're like OT therapy um, materials. So they're pretty expensive because usually the the sensory um, those sensory tools would be you know at a clinic or something. But you can look for some maybe and buy them secondhand on like Facebook's Marketplace or your local um, secondhand. Uh, marketplaces around your area. So that's what we did. And we found uh, quite a few different things that were uh, like a fraction of the cost. And then um, we can share them with other families near us too, while they, or bring them to like our conventions when we get together as with our state or with our, our group, we just let the kids play on those toys that are all open-ended. They figure out how to make them into all sorts of different things. So Heavy work has been amazing for us and learning about proprioception and some of those inputs for kids. That's awesome. And along those lines, um, especially when you have kids that are first starting to learn to walk um, and using pre canes, you know, sometimes the orientation and mobility specialists will make one out of PVC pipe and have rollers on it and all that kind of stuff. My daughter was never a fan of those. So we found um, the Fisher Price Brilliant basics uh, doll stroller. And then we also had a different one, um, but we attached um, ankle weights that have a Velcro strap to that. So again, like Sarah was saying, so that it was heavy work. It wasn't just this light plastic thing that would fly out away from her as she was learning to navigate around. It had a little bit more substance. And I think it was only, you know, two, maybe three pounds. It wasn't a ton of weight, um, but that also was a really great uh, sensory input for her when she was first learning to walk and needed something in front of her. So she knew what was coming like a curb or a wall or um, a car or something like that, but also um, was a little bit easier to convince her to push her baby doll around instead of having to <laughs> carry around this PVC pipe or um, her cane when she wasn't quite coordinated enough to be able to manage her cane and walking and all of those things um, when she was quite tiny. Um, the next category, or actually before we go on to that, does anybody have any questions? You can throw them in the chat or unmute yourself um, before we go on to gross motor. How about we give away a door prize? Great idea. Let's see. Let me just Sorry, make sure my live's still going on. Sorry? Oh, never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> okay, the random number generator generated the number one. So a $25 gift certificate to the NFB Independence Market is going to go to Anastasia Fong. Uh, Anastasia, if you can just send me your, um, well, send me a, a message on Facebook and, and we'll get that to you. And that's Kimberly Banks that you need to send it to. Um, so the next section, congratulations, by the way, that's awesome. And it, just briefly, in case um, anyone here doesn't know, the Independence Market is a um, shop with the National Federation of the Blind in um, Baltimore. And they have canes, they have accessible kitchen um, things like measuring cups, they have math games, they have accessible balls like soccer balls, frisbees, um, volleyballs, things like that that have bells inside. Um, you can get playing cards and then they have um, Slate and Stylus and um, all kinds of other, you know, math games and, and things for adults as well. So even if you don't want a door prize, feel free to check out the Independence Market and you can also call the National Federation of the Blind and um, talk with the people who run the Independence Market. Um, so it's a great resource. And if you ever are in the Baltimore area, I highly recommend 
maybe not when it, we're in a pandemic, but I highly recommend um, taking the time to stop by and visit the National Center because it's a pretty incredible place. Um, so for the next category, um, I have gross motor. And Sarah kind of touched on that a little bit with the proprioceptive and heavy work earlier. Um, some of the things that have been really great for both of our girls are trampolines and hip hop balls. Um, that gives them that deep pressure and um, just the ability to move. I know for my daughter, she can't run like her peers, but she still has the energy of her peers. And so jumping has been a great way for her to be able to expend that energy, even if she's not running around on the playground. Um, you can get the little tykes. One is usually on sale at this time of year that has a handlebar. Um, we also got one from Walmart that had, I think it was only three and a half feet across, but it had a netting around the whole thing. So they couldn't fall off. And then there was um, a bar that she could hold on to if she wanted to. And she started using that when she was not quite a year and a half um, and used it until she outgrew it and then has moved on to um, larger ones. But she's six and still loves to jump. And I don't see that, that uh, need going away anytime soon. Um, other things that have been really great are swings. If you have a tree, you can just get a strap swing or a, you know, a little baby bucket swing and hang it up in your tree in your yard. There's also um, a, an indoor swing that goes in a door frame. I believe it's called the indoor, indoor play things or something like that. I can find that um, and I'll add it to the list that we'll send out as follow up. Um, it goes in a door frame and you bolt it in place and then there's different straps that can go on that. And my daughter used that from the time she was a year until she was uh, almost six and she loved it until she got too big for it and still asks for it all the time. Um, we also have a dizzy disc and like Sarah said earlier, um, finding things on eBay or you know Facebook Marketplace or Let Go or all the different um, resale options that are out there in the world these days, you can often find this stuff and not have to pay full price. So I highly recommend doing that. Um, the Dizzy Disc is a platform that can, um, it's a circle and it rotates around, but you can also tilt the incline. So it's either completely flat or slightly tilted and your child has to um, negotiate how to keep their body balanced and they can spin at different rates. You can lay down on your tummy, on your back, you can sit up. Um, and that has been really great for vestibular input of just spinning and doing it slowly or quickly. Um, and there are definitely times where my daughter seeks out that <laughs> spinning motion and that has been a great way um, to make that happen. There's also the billabo, which is an open-ended, make it whatever you want it to be. You can sit inside of it and kind of rock back and forth. Um, you can stand on it, you can hop off of it, you can put it on your back like a turtle. Um, it's a great um, open-ended play option. Um, and then there's also for the summer um, splash pads that it's like a circle, but it's not deep where there's water. It just sprays water out of little holes all around it. If you're concerned about your kid, you know, sitting in water or if they don't like that or whatever, but it's still a great way. And I think it has kind of a, um, the water is in the bottom. So it's kind of like stepping on a puddle, but it's not going to get you completely wet. And then it sprays out. Um, <clears throat> and then also, well, I had the um, heavy work, like Sarah said, with the, the laundry basket, um, hip hop balls where it has the little handle and you sit on the ball and hop up and down, or there's the roadie that looks like a horse. And then there's unicorns and dinosaurs and all of those <laughs> different iterations of it, but where you can sit and bounce up and down, but not necessarily travel um, across the floor. It's a little bit more stable than the ball where you have to um, keep yourself a bit more balanced. And those are often sized. So just make sure that you're looking at what size is your child and what size do they need. Um, for the hip hop balls, you really want it to be when they're sitting on it and holding the handles where their legs are at a 90 degree angle, like they're sitting in a chair. If it's too big, it's hard for them to um, get positioned correctly. Um, Sarah, do you have any other gross motor experience toys you wanna to share? All sorts. We do gross motor all day long, every day. Every day. Um, and, <laughs> so another one that's um, like the hip hop ball, like that's one that maybe some of us would have grown up with those little um, 
balls with the handle or some of them have like two little ears or horns that the child can hold on to while they're hopping around. Um, another version of that is called a roadie. It's a, a European company and it's a little bit thicker, um, like a vinyl-y plastic and you blow it up. You can blow it up kind of however you need it sized for your child. It's like a donkey. They have a couple different um, colors and then there's other companies that are making them too that are kind of more aftermarket. This one's a little bit pricier, but that works, I think, well for like ages that are maybe four and under, depending on how, how tall your child is. So we got one for our child when she was one and she couldn't stand unassisted. She didn't stand, stand unassisted until she was about 22 months. Um, but she, we would put a pillow on each side of her because it was a little bit too tall. She was little <laughs> and we put a pillow on each side and she would just kind of sway side to side. And she would get that, you know, she's getting that input. She's getting a little bit of strength because she has to hold her body up on it and hold her, get some core strength. So the roadie was a really fun one. And now she's, you know, hopping all around the house. There's the bigger version for ages like five and up, or it's really a weight, weight rated. Um, they also have rocker bases you could put on under them. So you could use it kind of like those old uh, vintage rocking horses, the plastic ones with the big squeaky springs, the metal springs. Um, so it has that kind of a component, like a rocking horse, um, that you, a different base you can add to it. And um, the roadie max, I think, goes up to 150 pounds. So um, our daughter likes to get on her, the little one and then do what she calls a um, prairie ride. She learned about Black Beauty and <laughs> learned about taking care of horses. So I get on the big one. I'm over 150 pounds, and it's been OK. Um, and it's just been fun to get to like get in there and just really play play hard with your kid. Um, the Billabo, I second the Billabo big time. That's been a great one for us. Another one is like a spinning wheel. It's kind of like a dry, like a steering wheel um, for, for a swing option. And um, lots of different ways we, you can use a swing. You could use um, like a hammock and just hang it from an anchor in your home. And, you know, solidly, placed of course in the um, rafters or whatnot. Uh, and we, so we used like a woven wrap when she was a baby and then she obviously grew out of it and was too big for me to carry, but we um, just attached it into a swing. And that's her favorite attachment on our swing currently. We just put it up in the house. It doesn't, we don't have a ton of space, but it's been fine um, to be able to use that. Um, the rocker board are really great, like the bent wood. Um, are fantastic. There's some really big ones you can find. They're more pricey, but they're incredible. A lot of kids will just sit in their little rocker board. It's like a semicircle, um, just a little arc, and really open-ended, really great play toy. And they'll, they could, if it's a big, a big enough one, they can sit in it and like read and just kind of hang out and get that sensory input while, you know, doing something else or um, listening to a book or something. So, um, lots of different ways to do swings and different things like that. So the um, this the spinning wheel. There's a couple of them versions of them online, and um, the one that I saw was it's a green plastic one, and it's um, about thirty or thirty five. I got it secondhand from someone locally, but. Um, that has like a ball bearing inside of it. So it connects to your swing and then the child can just, they can either you can do it low enough that they can you know, grab onto it, hold up their whole body weight and then spin. Um, so just a lots of different ways to, to play and facilitate that gross motor play. Another one for um, younger kids, if maybe they're, you've got a child that's not crawling or needs some help with the core strength, a great one to use is these are this is more pricey so if you have someone that's maybe going in on a gift some families like to go in on a gift for their child for a birthday or something or instead of a bunch of people gifting to their child a bunch of small items they can just pitch in and get one bigger item for the child a pickler's triangle is incredibly amazing um it's essentially like a like a tent shape so it's like an a-frame with one inch dowels that are like a ladder and then you can buy different heights. You can also get someone locally to build one for you. Um, they get a little bit pricier because of the materials cost a little bit more. Um, but the Pickler Triangle is really neat because you can set it up at different like levels usually. 
and the child is learning doing that a lot of a lot of blind children don't crawl and so getting that input where at least they're getting what i learned when our child was a baby is that it's okay if they don't crawl that's pretty normal because it's a really visual activity and our child is completely blind um but getting any input where they're using opposite hand and opposite foot so the left foot and the right hand um is they're still getting that brain development and that those pathways going in the brain that you would get as if you were crawling. So um, Pickler's triangle is great for that, or um, even just letting them crawl up the stairs. We would put out, pull out a uh, the on our couch in our living room. We'd pull out the cushions and then like set up a stairs on the cushions. So that if she fell, she wasn't coming, you know, falling down really far, but she was learning how to climb and learning how to to get someplace and then put a little goal, like a little toy that was a squeaky toy or one that made the sound so that it would encourage her to, um, to you know, move her body and, and get it moving and, and get walking. Another thing that helped with us for some of those um, when she was a baby uh, was she didn't know how to sit up on her own and she wouldn't do it because she didn't have the visual input or something to sit up with. So we used one of those Johnny jump ups and some people swear by like not doing any of those type of things, but it was fantastic for us because it really helped her core strength and she was sitting up by like five months, even though she was very rolly. Um, so because she just loved to jump and loved to just play. So we just play music and she would jump to the beat. And it's, yeah, it's been fun, um, especially fun following her lead and following kind of her interests and really what gets her excited about things. So. Um, even though it's a lot of, it feels like sometimes it's a lot of work to be a parent of a blind child because there's a little bit more, um, you got to be a little, get get in there <laughs> and, and work on some of those developmental goals. Um, but it's also been really, really cool to see how if we let our kids take the lead and then just support them on wherever their interests take them, they are going to cruise and um, learn self-advocacy along the way. So. I was going to talk about, we haven't talked about music yet, but Michelle, what do you have next on your list? Sorry, I was adding the Etsy stuff to the chat. So if anybody's interested, I added the different um, uh, shops and then the things that I have ordered from those different places. Um, along with what Sarah was saying with the Jolly Jumper, we also, we live parallel lives, just so you know, <laughs> our kids are so similar, which is really great to be able to say, oh, you too? Okay, great. Um, we had the Jolly Jumper, but we, instead of having the one that goes in the door frame, we had a standalone frame. And my daughter, um, it has a chest strap that Velcros around their chest and goes between their legs. And so it forces them to stand up more. And so she learned how to start taking steps and learned how to jump by doing that. And it was great. I mean, we would do the same thing where we would play music and she loved it. Um, and that was really nice to be able to also fold it up and put it away, but um, cause it just, you know, there's little screws in the top and you loosen those and fold it flat and you can move it out of the way if you need to. Um, but that was a really awesome uh, sensory activity for her when she was older too, or younger. Um, and also the Pickler Triangle, totally second that my daughter still uses it. We got one, um, I'll add that to the Etsy. I love Etsy guys. Um, <laughs> we got the um, largest one that we could find on, um, on Etsy and she still uses it all the time. If she needs to move her body and figure out how to negotiate. And the thing that's been really nice about it is we were running into a lot of hesitation at the school for her to explore playground equipment and so it became really important for me to, for her to have time and space and opportunity to explore her body and to learn how to climb and do all those things that when she was at school, it was like, oh, 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 don't do that. You might fall, you might fall. And so at home, we just set it up and she could do whatever she wanted. And sometimes she fell, but for the most part, she beca became a really great climber. And so um, it has been just great to have those opportunities where you have the freedom to explore in your own way, in your own time, and kind of they can test their own limits of what they're comfortable with without the pressure of other kids running around or adults commenting about what they should or shouldn't be doing. Um, so those have all been really helpful. Um, the next thing I had was household items, 
or like treasure baskets and things like that. But Sarah, I don't know if that you want to take a break for questions or um, if there was something else that you wanted to go to next. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we could ask to see what age ranges the kids are, the families yeah. are here, what ages their kids are. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Sorry, I'm Julie. Uh, my uh, son is uh, 16 months. Awesome. So we can kind of choose how we want to use the time for those that are here and maybe specific things that you guys are working on. And Hi, my name is Meredith and uh, my son is one, but adjusted age is probably 10 months. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Hi, this is Rachel. Aurelia is a uh, seven. And we have another Rachel. Eliana in the chat. Oh, and five and a half, developmentally three to four. Anybody else? I see a 10 year old, six year old. Awesome. So it seems like a lot of people that are here now are that younger um, 10 and under age, which is awesome. That's what we have experience with. <laughs> I, I look to other people when it comes to teenagers and things like that, four and a half year old. Yeah. So it looks like everybody is um, 10 months to 10 years old at this point. Um, Let's go ahead and give another door prize. Yeah. Um, the random number generator generated the number nine. So Karen, I'm going to get the last name wrong. Karen Polnitz, Pol Polnitz. If you could post your email in the um, in the comments, um, I'll send you a message and we can talk about how you can get your $25 Independence Market gift card. So awesome. Karen, um, post your, there's a, does every, I, I guess um, there's a chat button and you just hit chat and then you can type whatever you want in there and um, we'll get that sent out to you. And you can send it directly to Kimberly Banks. She's listed as the co-host. Yeah, and I'll actually type my email in the um, in the chat as well. And then you can email me directly if you're more comfortable. Okay. Awesome. It looks like so Patricia just joined us. Patricia, would you like to share if you've had a child in your life, how old? anyone else wants to share and i there's oh <laughs> um there's some people uh uh that said 12 but developmentally five to six so yeah everybody's in that kind of 10 and under range um so the next uh category that i had is household items and what i call treasure baskets um this is a montessori and rye philosophy as far as child development goes um but because our kids don't learn necessarily incidentally from just observing the world around them while they're sitting in their high chair or in a classroom or whatever, um, giving them opportunity to explore everyday objects in a, you know, figure it out for yourself kind of way. So since my daughter was little, we would have a treasure basket and we still have one to this day that she loves and keeps her special things in. Um, but we would do different themes. For example, having a wooden spoon and a rubber spatula and a metal bowl and a, a, either a stainless steel or a glass cup if you're on a rug um, and kind of keeping an eye out for them. But just giving your child a chance to explore household objects that we use every day and figuring out how do tongs work and how do I, what do I do with a cup and <clears throat> things like that. You can also do things for the bathroom like a washcloth and a bar of soap that's even if it's still in the package or you can take it out um you know that has different scents to it or having um a toothbrush and a hairbrush and a comb and just giving them those chances to explore and play with them um, outside of daily routines where they have a little bit more freedom and can play around with what sound does it make and when i drop it what does a, a comb sound like versus what does a brush sound like my daughter would drop things 
over and over and over and over again. And when she was three, she was getting in trouble in school for not handling the materials appropriately in her Montessori school. And I tried to tell the teachers, I think she's trying to figure out what does it sound like when I drop this so that when I drop it, I know how to find it. And you know, how <laughs> does it roll away or does it just fall flat at my feet and stay there? And so she was really experimenting with that and still does sometimes. Um, but just giving your child the freedom to be able to explore materials. And you can come up with a zillion different, um, you know, categories, nature items, um, and dressing, like having socks and shoes and shirts that they can, again, just play with and figure out where the tags are and that there's a button and a zipper and a snap and um, all of that kind of stuff. So that is another option. Um, and then, oh, this kind of goes along with the household items, but something that we loved and still use to this day, and I included it, I think, in the chat um, from Etsy, and you can now get them on Amazon too. It was a wooden knife. So it's a square, if I can get my hands right, it's a square knife, and it has a little bit of a curve on the top where your hand goes, and then it's indented where you would pinch it with your fingers. Um, and you can cut cheese, apples, Celery, uh, carrots would be a little bit harder, um, bananas, anything like that. And my daughter could chop her own food however she wanted. And there was no danger of her cutting her finger. Um, she might pinch it a little bit, but she wasn't gonna cut herself. Um, and then lettuce knives, or there's some kid, I think it's Curious Chef makes them. And there's, again, there's some other ones on Amazon that are um, made of nylon or plastic. And they're like lettuce knives where you can you know, cut a head of lettuce with it, but you can also use it for cutting um, lots of different things. And there's far less chance of your child cutting their finger with a knife, um, but you know, they can still engage in helping prepare food and things like that. Um, I know Sarah is awesome with involving her daughter in cooking at home. So she might have some other ideas for things like that as well. Thanks. I'm not as awesome as I, <laughs> as often as I'd like to be with cooking with her, but, um, but it's always a fun, yeah, it's always a good adventure. Um, for household items, we learned that it's better just to use the actual item than to get like a play version or a toy version of something, um, mainly just because they're actually usable. And so instead of, um, we phased out our play kitchen that I was all excited about when she was little, she rarely used it. She wanted to be in the kitchen right there doing what we were doing with us. Um, hands in everything, wanted to taste each item as we were you know, putting it. We would make smoothies um, every couple of days and she would taste each item as, she, um, as we would put it in and then taste it when it was done or taste it after each, you know, after we added each item. It was just fun to see that she just loved, loved, loved experiencing everything and getting a, a mind, a reference for everything, a reference point and just expanding that. The and she has access to most everything. She knows how to get to um, you know the dishes and we've got some dishes that are at her level so she can access them um, and then a snack drawer that she can get into and a lot of times she gets mad at us when we you know start serving things so she says no no it's my turn <laughs> but anything that can help increase their independence you know in the around the home and know that Is anyone else experiencing um, technical issues with it cutting out? If you can message in the chat or is it just me? <laughs> I think that it's Sarah's um, computer. Oh, okay. All right, hold tight everybody. We will get this sorted out. While all the world is on the internet now, it's hard to, <laughs> hard to keep everybody connected. Um, while we're waiting for Sarah's video to come back on, does anybody have um, questions or comments? You can put them in the chat or unmute yourself.
Can you talk about bicycles? Oh, good point. What age specifically? Because I can talk about several different ones. Oscar was asking about bicycles. Um, if for younger kids, there's a, a wooden bike called the wishbone and you can, can, it can be a balance bike or a tricycle, there are no pedals. So their feet have to be the momentum. Um, and your daughter's 10, okay. Um, so we, uh, that is a great one because you can have it be a two wheeler or a three wheeler and they have to self propel. So it gives them more input and kind of grounds them a little bit more when they're little. Um, and then I have seen, and Oscar, I'll have to look. I have seen a bike where you can attach it to an adult bike and then it um, has a, and another, like a kid size bike that can attach to the adult's bike. So it's almost tandem, but not really the same. It's called oh. a trail gator. Trail gator, thank you. Um, yeah, we will, I can put a link for that, the trail gator. There was also, God, I will have to find this. There, <laughs> when I was in Washington DC for the NFB National Seminar one year, Washington Seminar one year, we were standing in a traffic light and someone came up to us and said, hey, I have a foundation that provides bikes for blind people. What? <laughs> Tandem bikes. So um, I can try to figure that one. I'll figure that out and send it uh, in the chat as well. Um, are there any other questions? Striders are great with no pedals and build balance for your younger kids feet to touch the ground. Yeah. And um, did somebody let Sarah in? I see that she. Oh. She, I think somebody must have let her, let her in. Um, Oscar, depending on if you have a PT or OT, you might qualify for a tricycle through insurance and Medicaid. Yes, that's another option. Um, depending on the ability level of your kids, there are tri tricycles for older children. So they have the stability and there's even some that have straps that go around their feet to keep their feet in place. And there's a handle in the back for kids. <laughs> so, I mean, for the adult, so you can help propel them. Um, the Image Center in Baltimore. Okay, awesome. Um, the Image Center in Baltimore makes adaptive bikes. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so check with your OT or PT to see if you might qualify for the adapted tricycles. Um, there's also a program, I think it's called Go Go Baby, and they modify um, the, like the, you know, kid cars that have, are battery operated or different materials, they will assess your child and what their needs are and their size and all of that. And they will create adaptive bikes. For example, if you have a child who has limited mobility, but they can put a switch behind their head and then they can um, lean their head back and make it go. And then when they move their forehead head forward, it stops. Um, and I believe that's go, go baby. I will also look for that link and send it in the chat. Sarah, are you back with us? I am, sorry. That's Someone okay. was calling and it popped me out. Oh. Um, no, this is great about bikes. There's. Did you already talk about regular bikes like trailers or attaching a child to with you on your bike? We did talk about the um, gate, what is it called? Trailer gator, trail gator that attaches, okay. um, but we didn't talk about the seat that just attaches. Okay, like, the, yeah. what's the trail gator? I don't know that one. Is it like a... Uh, just a wheel, an can, extra wheel, and you have no. to tag along. It's like a bar and it attaches a children's ah. bike to an adult's bike. Got it. There's another version. There's um, most of the bike companies sell one. It's like um, one company calls it a tag along. Another company calls it a, it's like a, just a wheel. The child has a wheel and, a, and handlebars and their own pedal set of pedals and it attaches on to the adult's bike and so they can help pedal um, providing they can stay in the, in the seat. Another one if your child isn't to that level yet probably around age like an average size of a seven-year-old six or seven-year-old would be big enough for that type. Um, so it essentially turns it like into a tandem size style bike um, would be uh, so the couple different companies make that. I know REI sells one. Um, the bigger companies make one too. Um, 
So there's that option. Uh, there's one that we have is called the WeHoo, and it's a trailer, a recumbent size style trailer. And our child is just getting um, a little bit big for it. She's about 50 pounds now and um, maybe 55, but she's just getting growing out of it a little bit. It's got a, a seat handlebars on the side, and then they've got the pedals in front. They have a version without pedals or with pedals. And so you can harness them in, it's a five point harness. And so she could have done that when, you know, since she was two and hopped in there, we used a different setup um, before that when she was a baby, but it's been great for us because she can pedal along. And if I don't pedal, she can help me pedal and get that input too. So that's um, fantastic. They have one that's a, the WeHoo is a, a, either you can choose a single or a double. So if you've got multiple kids, you can get one that has two seats. It only allows for one child to pedal, um, but that's a great one. The other one we had when she was a baby sat in front of us instead of the seat in the back that you connect to the back of, you know, above your back wheel. It connected on the, the, the bar in front of you and you just, um, pedal your legs, your knees to the side instead of right in front. It's called a Wii Ride, and that was fantastic. And it's not terribly expensive. You can look for those used as well. Um, that had a five-point harness as well, and went up to about eight, uh, maybe weight probably thirty pounds comfortably. And for people with older kids, Walmart regularly has tandem bikes on sale for between two and three hundred dollars. So they're not they're not completely, you know, they're, they're getting easier to find. When my daughter was, was little, um, a tandem bike was so expensive. Um, but I have seen them at Walmart for in the two to $300 range, which is, which is pretty, pretty good for a tandem. I've heard of a couple people that are fully blind using a unicycle with a cane or using a skateboard. There's a there's a one that's pretty popular right now. He uses a skateboard and a couple of them that I've seen on YouTube. Um, they use their cane, just a, either a roller ball or not, and they just use it really fantastically. <laughs> um, so all options, nothing's you know off the table. A lot of kids learn how to echolocate and ride a bike just fine. Regular bike, no really adaptive needing their needed adaptations needed. They're just learning and listening. Some people will put like a, a little ticker on the someone else's bike so they can hear in front and know when they're stopped or know when they're going. So all different options for bike stuff. My daughter also has a micro scooter. And so she, cause everybody on the block has one. Um, and so she's learning how to maneuver that and balance and move back and forth with it. She um, is not yet street ready, but is happy to uh, try it out at home. And, it, and it's a great um, balance activity for her because she is terrified of bikes, but she loves her scooter. Um, and also along those lines, you can get um, their flat square plastic scooter boards where you can roll around on the floor and you can put them on your, you know, lay on your belly, lay on your back, sit up on them, you know, tie a rope and pull your <laughs> stuffed animals, whatever. There's several different ones. We've gotten them off of um, Amazon and they're not terribly expensive. You often see them in occupational and physical therapy clinics, um, but that has been a great option as well. Uh, for going back to the gross motor stuff, um, we're coming up on the hour. So does anybody have any last questions before we switch to the older um, kids and Richard and Emily's presentation? Any other final thoughts, Sarah? We'll be posting um, a little bit more information on like games for the younger kids, uh, like board games type things. Um, I had a topic here too that we didn't quite get to on educational toys, things that we just got for fun to use as toys, but have been really fantastic as she's like learning math and um, numbers and grids and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll put a put that in the list of the items and stuff um, on the different things. We had that comment about music toys. Um, yeah. We could go on and on about music. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with music. Um, what age for the music toys? I'll just unmute myself. Um, she's five and she loves, loves, loves music. Like she, we have a drum set for her. We have, um, 
a keyboard for her. We have bongos for her. Um, so short of like getting more musical instruments, like I feel like all the baby, all the music toys are more geared for like babies and they have like lullabies mm-hmm. and stuff for them. So I would just like, I'm always looking on Amazon. I just trying to see if there's any other toys I'm not seeing that are kind of music toys, but aren't necessarily instruments, but that would appeal to a five-year-old. Okay. So one that's been fun for us is a, there's a couple of Bluetooth microphones that are really fun if your child likes sound and likes to kind of practice with that. Um, we can kind of shut the door <laughs> when she's using it. Um, but that's been a fun one, a Bluetooth microphone that you just plug in and then they can kind of walk around with it. Um, and that's been able to, for her, it's been able to help her get more comfortable with her voice. She used to be a really soft talker and the microphone has been a really big help with that. Um, shaker eggs are fantastic and you can use them in all sorts of ways. Um, they're just like a maraca, but instead of the handle, it just is an egg. They're great for all ages and you can use them, you know, later with games and playing games out in your yard. And um, with music, we've got a bunch of music stuff too. A fun, just depending on kind of what the child likes. Um, most musical instruments need no adaptations. So like a bell set, the, the bells that you either ring, like a hand bell, they have ones that you tap we've had when we since she was little um and they go through the whole octave and then, then you can get like the others the the bigger expanded set there's also the bells that um like a like a xylophone type but a real xylophone um which is really fun and no an adaptation needed it's just like the piano they just learn um how to how to use it that way and uh, i mean you can't go wrong with the guitar <laughs> so yeah, anything that that they just that they're interested in, I think, is good to just follow that. We also have a thank you. We yeah. also have a ukulele, and um, that has been really great because it's smaller scale, and you can get them for you know twenty or thirty dollars. I definitely recommend finding you know instruments that are um, more natural sounds instead of kind of the tingy you know baby infant toys sometimes, um, and then also. Um, making your own sound shakers and putting different uh, materials inside, you know, old film canisters or old prescription bottles or whatever and making matching sets and then your child can shake them and try to figure out which ones sound the same or which ones are different. That's really great. Um, And I had another thought. Oh, the other two that we use for music related is an Amazon Echo Dot. Um, My daughter is mastering the art of how to use those. Um, And then a Victor Reader Stream is a, um, I don't know how to best describe it, but you can do podcasts and music and audiobooks and um, all kinds of other things on it. And it has relatively simple buttons um, and can be used through the teenage years and beyond. Um, But that is also a great option. Um, Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry, go ahead, Sarah. Thank oh, you. yeah. So when we'll, we'll be posting more ideas, so we will love to, you know, send that out when it's ready or post it on our NOPBC page. So you'll hop on that and then um, we'll be posting a bunch of different ideas on how to adapt toys to um, just in a 30 seconds. Do we have 30 seconds? No. Um, hey, this is Anastasia. Um, I was going to ask about the Victor Reader um, because that's my daughter's favorite toy. Um, even though it's not really a toy, I guess. But she has a Victor Reader. I think she's had it maybe two or three years. Does anybody know if like, recently we've noticed like the battery doesn't go as long as it used to? Is that normal? I've heard they last about four or five years and then you have to get a new one with the battery. Oh, okay. But maybe, maybe check with the company and see what they say. Okay. I think it's only warranted for a year, if I so remember watch. correctly, but it's our daughter's favorite thing too. <laughs> okay. Um, just so you know, you can also connect it with, um, with Audible. And so you can have everything on there. Yeah, that yeah, too. Also great, great on the Amazon devices, we have Audible and that has been fantastic too. Um, just in the comments, a couple of people said, um, the hot potato game is a great option where you sing the song and pass items back and forth until the music stops, or pass the potato back and forth until the music stops. 
and then a sound frog, which I think is the wooden one that has kind of a rigid back and then there's a little um, stick that you rub up and down. Um, also, even Guitar Center has some pretty great international uh, instruments like gourds that have, um, you know, that shake or they have the beads on the outside and you can rub your hand back and forth and it makes a great sound. Sometimes we even just go hang out at Guitar Center and explore the toys so you, or the instruments so you don't necessarily have to own them, <laughs> but you can go try them out and see which ones your kid um, enjoys and that's been really fun. Um, they have quite a selection at um, Guitar Center. So rain, rain sticks are really fun too. Yes, rain sticks are also really fun. Any other questions before we pass the baton? Um, thank you, Sarah, Michelle. Um, are you guys gonna be able to stay on for questions a little bit later? I know um, Emily and Richard are gonna talk a lot about, or are gonna talk some about um, creating accessible toys from toys you buy off the shelf. Um, so we might have some questions for you guys again after, after Emily and Richard. Yeah, I can stick around. I'll, I'll be on. Okay. Awesome. I wouldn't miss a presentation from Emily from Emily and Richard. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to go ahead and again give another door prize. Uh, let me get back to my random number generator. Ten. It's the number is ten. Julie's iPhone. Julie's iPhone. If you could send me a message in the chat with your email. And I'll also post my email um, if you'd rather contact me that way. You're going to get a $25 gift card to 64 ounce games, which was generously donated by Emily and Richard Gibbs, who are the owner of 64 ounce games and are about and they're about to speak with us. Um, they're also both teachers of blind students and they're generally just super awesome people and we're ready to hear from them now. Um, Hi, um, well, I'm Emily Gibbs and I am a teacher of blind students. I work for the National Federation of the Blind of Texas where I'm their director of youth and education services. I'm also the president of the Texas Association of Parents of Blind Children and um, I'm co-owner of 60 Per Ounce Games. Um, I'm actually not a, um, teacher of blind students, although I've taught many blind students. Um, I'm a life skills teacher who teaches at um, here or here in Texas. Um, I'm a board game addict and um, and I've translated a bunch of board games. Um, so um, I'm going to put 64 ounce games in the chat. Basically, um, I joke that it is a self supporting hobby. We have our LLC, but we don't really make a lot of money doing it. We just do it because we think it's really important that everyone, um, blind people especially, have access to board games. And we love board games, and we got frustrated because whenever we wanted to play what we considered fun games, um, you know, not necessarily the ones you hear all the time, not Monopoly, not Scrabble, things like Apples to Apples or um, Ticket to Ride, Settlers of Catan, those kind of games that maybe you don't hear about all the time. They're getting to be much more popular. But when we started this, you know, they were not at all mainstream, but we wanted to play, play them with our friends. We happened to know a lot of blind people and we would get frustrated because our blind friends couldn't play these games. And so when we went to, um, Richard actually had decided to design a game. He loves games and he had created a game of his own and we wanted to make it accessible for um, our blind friends. And so we went to game companies saying, can you make braille cards? And it turned out that the manufacturers that make board games, they can't make braille. And the manufacturers that can make braille can't make board games. So when we tried to do both, we realized what a big mess it was trying to do that. Yeah, it was a complete mess. And then uh, we decided that um, it'd be more important for us, and we ended up running a Kickstarter um, to start the business. 
it would be more important for us to kind of bridge that gap and get to the point where um, blind people, if they want to play a game, well, they can't. They can purchase, um, and the system that we came up with is what we call accessibility kits. And the way that works is you go to uh, our website, you purchase um, an accessibility kit. An accessibility kit consists of um, braille, um, braille, transparent braille stickers, and um, there's my daughter. Um, transparent braille stickers and um, and sometimes it's sleeves. Um, some of our more complex will have 3D printed items or laser cut items in it. Anything that's necessary to make that particular game so they'll, uh, accessible. So they'll go to our website, um, they'll purchase the game, um, the accessibility kit from us, and we usually give a link to Amazon, although we do sell a couple of games directly. And um, and they put them to you put it together, and you end up with an accessible game at the end of the day. <laughs> so uh, we are working from home tonight, and we have five kids, so you might see more appearances tonight. Um, I was busy. I missed everything you just said. I don't know what I just said. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so we do have a lot of experience adapting games and making um, games accessible. So we can talk a little bit about making off the shelf stuff accessible. It's really, some are really easy to do, some are not. Um, the ones that we provide kits for, we try to provide kits for ones that are not, um, that they're not commercially available in Braille other places. Right. So we don't do Monopoly, we don't do Scrabble, we don't do Uno. We don't do, um, you know, just playing cards or chess. But let's say what we do do. Um, we have lot, over 100 different games now. Um, we have Settlers of Catan. We have um, a game called Suro, which is a... Um, Why don't you grab one of the boards so we can show up? Well, uh, um, so we do... So what happens is... So for instance, this is a board that we've made for Ticket to Ride. So it is, um, it's thermoform plastic and it's clear. So it sits directly over the regular board. It has all of the cities in Braille, has all of the, the routes in Braille. And so you would lay this directly over the board and so you'd be able to play the, the game. And um, what's really important for us is so blind people and sighted people can play the same games together at the same time. Right. Um. So Ticket to Ride is a big one. That's a really popular game. Um, we have Exploding Kittens, which is hugely popular. It's kind of like an Uno type game, except it's a little bit more, it's like a hot potato Uno. Um, we have um, other, we have a lot of strategy games um, like Dominion, where you build your own, it's kind of like magic in that you have a bunch of different options of cards, but instead you're building your own deck and, during the gameplay. Um, we have Pandemic, which is you fight a pandemic, which would be <laughs> good practice for right now. Um, another really cool game that we have is called Blockus. Um, let me get that down because it has some 3D printed parts and neat stuff in it. Um, so for this one, you're, um, this one, it's just a territory control game. Um, in the original version, all the pieces are square. Well, that's not tactically different. There's no way a blind person can play that. Um, the game itself comes with, um, or it has like Tetris type shapes and stuff. Um, but the game comes with a tray that has like these indents in it already. So this is an indented tray that has little pieces on it. But the pieces can fit um, our 3D printed pieces can fit directly onto the board like that. So one player will play as circles, one player will play as X's, one player will play as squares, and one player plays as Pentagon. So they're all tactically different, but they're kind of linked together. So um, a blind person can play with a sighted person feeling the board and it won't scatter around. Um, 
And so a lot of our newer, some of our newer kits um, have, because we just got a new 3D printer, um, have these 3D printed uh, components to them. Um, we also support, um, we make dice for um, role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons or um, other, like, um, other role playing games. Yeah. Um, we're happy to accept questions too. If you have any questions to ask us, we, um, I had a list. They asked me to talk about some technology too. So I have some list of technology for older kids that is available, especially something like the iPad, which is accessible right off the shelf. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, unfortunately, one thing we know well is that one, as kids get older, their toys get more expensive and so do their Christmas presents. And I'm sure you're understanding that too. So um, one thing that's really nice about the iPad, I promised I would show this off, let's see. If I can get it so you can see the camera. Um, in settings, there is an um, accessibility option. I don't think you can see it. But so if you go into accessibility and you go to voiceover, you can turn voiceover on and this is right off the shelf. Important. So right off the shelf, you can turn on and actually Let's listen see. to. Home box, portrait, voice. And your voiceover will voice turn over on. alert, important. OK, button. Photos, settings, page one of two dot. Chrome, mail, Gmail, Google Calendar, files. Double tap to open. So an iPad Apps will actually. Suggestions, settings. Right out of the box, talk to you, which is not. Vo voice over. You know, voice everybody has on. iPhones, everybody has iPads, and blind kids can use them just like everybody else. And so that's fantastic. Um, some other really great options for technology or for presents this Christmas would be um, the Braille Code Jumper from APH. It is a really neat um coding system they just developed for blind kids. Again, it's a little on the pricey side, but it um, teaches kids to code, which is fun and important. The Victor Reader Stream, which they talked about already, it allows kids to listen to Audible, audiobooks, music. It's great for all ages. And then I also had listed the Sensational Blackboard and the uh, Intact Sketchpad. And both of these are kind of lower tech ways for kids to draw tactily. Thank you. Um, the Sensational Blackboard is just, it's um, a hard background with almost like a rubber topping and you can draw on paper with a pen. So it doesn't really need anything high tech, but it makes raised line drawings. The Intact Sketchpad uses um, the kind of the plasticky paper that is used in um, the more high tech drawing sketch um, ability. It's available from APH, but it makes really clear um, graphics. And it's a little bit pricier because it needs a stylus and has a magnet system, but it's really a really great way to draw. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, APH just released a little 20. 20 character braille display called the chameleon braille display and it is very pricey but it's not it's cheap for a braille display but braille displays are very pricey but it's very good i've heard fantastic things about it it connects via bluetooth it has some note-taking features some reading features for books connects to your phone or your ipad and it comes in fun colors which Braille displays don't usually do. It's geared towards kids. Um, thank you. And so it's a really, uh, it's a really great kind of entry level Braille display that's available this season. All right. Do you have any questions there? Does anybody have any questions for us? Um, we can do another 
Door prize. Sure. Eighteen. Sorry, I've got a countdown farther this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, forty-ten, forty-eleven, forty
um, another option that's really good for um, no braille would be um, strategy game would be Carcassum. Um, that is a game where you have little, um, and our version of it kind of pricey because it's completely 3D printed. It almost, it pretty much replaces the entire game. Um, but it had, you put these pieces together. Um, right, I don't know where it is. Um, Another one I would suggest would be um, that we've already shown would be blocks. Yes, that would be. Let me see. Remember where. It's okay. You don't need a blank. All right. I'll... So, will these be listed in the email? We listed some of them. We can definitely uh, make sure that we list other ones. But we try not to sell bad games. So if you go on our website and browse, um, I will recommend, or I would highly recommend everything that we're selling pretty much because I love games and I wouldn't have picked them out for Braille if I didn't think that they were great games. Kim, do you have anything else you'd like us to talk about? Um, how about, do you guys have any suggestions for things that parent, parents can maybe just buy off the shelf at Target or send a link to grandma from amazon.com of, of just something, you know, super readily available that a parent might be able to get and um, either easily make accessible or is something that a parent wouldn't think of as being accessible? It can be games or toys. Okay. Um, let's see. There, I know that there is a really fantastic version of Twister that's all tactile. And so that's straight out of the box. Um, it comes with, there, um, and also one thing that I have adapted many times is um, Connect 4. If you drill holes in half the pieces, you don't have, to, or so it's already, Pretty easy to make accessible. Um, Any other suggestions you have? I mean, I've well, done. Yeah. Um, hot or um, Elmer's glue and hot glue and other tape are, are, are your friends if you're um, wanting to do that. Obviously, we have the kits that you can buy and attach onto the games too. But if you're trying to do something that for some reason we don't offer, um, just being able to mark off parts of the thing and um, add Braille onto important parts are uh, is very good to do. Um, and if you have a Braille writer, I mean, a very common thing is just take the cards and put them in the Braille writer and type it up yourself. Um, I know a lot of my um, blind gamer friends will do that for games that we don't offer yet. Um, and they that obviously you'd have to have some knowledge of Braille in order to do that, but that is definitely an option just sticking the cards in the Braille writer itself uh, or using a slate and stylus, depending on which you prefer. Um, Let's see. I know a lot of my, I know several of my adult blind friends are really into um, card making right now. And so I know a lot of, um, I know arts and crafts aren't thought to be, you know, particularly blind friendly, but they can be very tactile because the different papers have different textures and so do the different stamps. And so you can get something called a die, um, a die cut machine or an embossing machine that actually embosses um, pictures on the paper. And so I have, I think three or four um, close blind friends who all make cards now because they like, messing with the different tactile options that they have um, and i always think it's really fascinating because it wouldn't be something that i would think of straight up usually that it's very tactile or very accessible but apparently card making is sarah um michelle do you have any suggestions for um off the shelf toys and games that 
fat ba fat brain toys uh, i just noticed started selling things at uh target and the the few that they have are um more geared to the younger crowd like probably four and under ish um except they have some good fidget qualities to them um they're they had um, these little silicone things that you squeeze and they pop. Um, they had a spinner where the pieces would spin up and down, but it was still contained on the post. Um, they had the dimple, which is a silicone piece that pops in and out back and forth. And they have versions um, that have braille numbers on them that you can get from the website. I haven't seen those in Target. Um, and um, Sarah, what is it? Is it smart? Smart travel games. Smart, smart games. Smart games. Um, also have some great accessible um, games. They're all tactile. And there's yeah. some travel, like smaller, but really, really cute, really well done. I just found out about that company this year. So we might get one for next month. <laughs> um, I've started a little NOPBC um, wish list on Amazon. It's only small, but it'll grow, I think, later this week. Um, and it's a public list, so we can maybe add to it and people can put different ideas on there too, so. Um, one thing that I would, one of the things that we've used in um, Bell Academies in the past have been um, these kind of big stepping stones. And um, we would lay them out, they're shaped like a turtle shell and um, kids could use their canes to find them and kind of jump across um, from stone to stone. They're kind of like, I guess comparable to a balance beam, but instead of a beam, they're like kind of this concave um, turtle shell. It's it's actually a turtle shell. I'll post a link in the in the chat. But we've used those with our um, with our blind kids at Bell. Um, I'm trying to think of other just we can definitely add to that Amazon list um, and get that list to everybody. Um, for the younger kids or those learning braille and you're wanting to use actual like actual size of braille not jumbo braille or something target also sells the um i've got it here hold on a sec it's the i forget the name it's it's a rubber wood they're little tiles they have numbers and letters and then it has a tactile representation with the different leaves for the numbers so they have one through ten um, set and they're just small tiles like the like a rummy cube shape or size and then the back side of the letters they've got alphabet and numbers those are really cute for the younger kids um, and then just and then they have the tactile letter that's like in, engraved like set in so they can fill the actual tactile letter too and use that and learn that as a skill too but it was actually like braille sized braille okay, I pulled up my um, my Amazon wish list for my Bell program, and some of the things that we we had for our kids were Wiki sticks, which everybody everybody knows about Wiki sticks. But there's actually a, a a brand called Impressa that's much cheaper, and the and the Wiki I think they're better quality than Wiki sticks. Um, plastic balancing monster feet. These are really fun. Um, it I'll, I'll I'll post a link to my. To, I'll, I'll send my wish list to you guys so that you can add it to yours. Um, click and play foam pogo jumper. It's like, um, it's really easy to use. It's like a foam block on the bottom and it's got a kind of thick rubber band um, string. And when the kids jump on it, it squeaks and it's, it's pretty fun. Um, wooden Tetris brain teaser puzzles, um, geo boards. Um, blind kids really like geo boards. <laughs> like it's, it's not something you usually like think about right off the bat, but yeah, blind kids, my daughter always really like geo boards. Um, and that's, that's S2, what I've got for my awesome. All different shapes of them too. Yeah. And things like, um, I, like tactile, um, we had a tactile puzzle that was animals and the animals kind of fit together. That one was kind of hard for the kids, but um, the older kids seem to really like that one. I think Maxi Aids sells those and also um, Seedlings has some of those puzzles. They're wood and then have little, like the, the, the Braille dots are metal. Yeah. They have a really nice 
nice texture. Those are really, really well done. The and a lot of stuff from Melissa and Doug. Yeah, um, that's just what I was going to say. They're sound puzzles. They have a lot of stuff. Also, learning resources has a lot that are really fantastic. You could just add Braille to them, like all of their little um, animals that, um, their little plastic animals that you fit together. They have like the alphabet letter that's capital on one side and the lowercase on the other side. You could just attach the Braille. They, the learning locks is a really fun one. It has a key with a letter and then the a lock that it you know coordinates with. And so it has all 26 keys. Um, yeah, it's, there's all sorts of companies and we'll add that to the email too. There's just so many products <laughs> that it's hard to, to do, you know, to showcase a lot of them, but um, all sorts of fun ones we'll add onto that list. So watch for it. Um, Derek Lockbaum just asked, can you briefly discuss what the NOPBC offers as membership and do we have a convention? Um, is Carlton available? Or I can talk about it. With Carlton, just a minute, see if she unmutes herself. She might be away from her computer. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that. Um, so the NOPBC offers as membership um, a community of like-minded indiv individuals, of parents, teachers, and friends of blind children. Um, we have a Facebook group, which all of that is free to join. Um, if you do join us at, a, we call it the twig level, I believe it's I'm not sure of the donation amount. I think twelve dollars. Twelve dollars. I'm sorry. I'm I'm on another Zoom, but it's twelve dollars. Thank you so much. Okay, so at twelve dollars, you do receive a um, um, a license to Zoom, um, Jaws, or I forget what the third is. It Fusion. Fusion, JAWS Fusion, you get a one-year license to one of those programs for your child. And we do hold a conference every year. We hold a conference at the NFB's um, National Convention. It's held in tandem with, our, our, our conference is held in tandem with their convention. Um, they run parallel to each other and together. Um, our national convention is going to be um, since COVID, you know, cross our fingers that we that we get to meet together again. Um, our national convention will be held um, mid July in New Orleans. If because of COVID we can't have a national convention together face to face, we will more than likely have a convention online. That's what we did this year. And um, if you can if you can get to New Orleans and make it. I will tell you, it's the best thing I ever did for my daughter. Um, we went to our first convention um, when my daughter was nine and um, it opened up a whole new world for us as far as um, what I thought was possible for her. Um, it, it was just great to be with thousands, literally thousands and thousands of blind blind adult mentors and see professionals and people who are really um, living the life they want. They're not letting their blindness hold them back. Um, so if you can get to a convention, I highly suggest it. Um, NFB does offer first time, um, first time attendee scholarships. Um, we can post more about the first time attendee scholarships on the Facebook page. I don't have a link for that right now. And I don't think that they've opened up applications for that just yet. Um, so that's what I've got about that. Um, someone asked, where will we, po where will we post the gift ideas from the Zoom? We're going to send out the gift ideas in an email. If you posted your email in the chat um, and we'll also send it out in our newsletter, I believe. Um, and we'll, we'll put a post on Facebook too. Um, so yeah, a few different ways to get that, but it'll be, it'll be available to, um, to everyone. Um, okay, do we have any more questions? How about we give away one last door prize? Um, 
This one is the grand prize, door prize. It's going to be a um, your choice of either um, exploding kittens or bananagrams um, with both the accessibility kit and the game. Um, let me get back to my random number generator. I'm sorry, I got to talking and Du, 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 du. Sorry, 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 sorry. Number nine. Oh, it's Kim Polnitz again. Kim, I'm gonna draw again. Sorry. Number four. Um, Ethan. Ethan, if you can um, post your email down in the chat or send me an email um, or, or send a private message to me um either one is fine we'll get you we'll get your address and get you get you your game sent out um so i guess if nobody sarah has a few more toy toys to share um if emily emily and richard do you have anything else you want to share we kind of got off track there sorry guys no that's okay that was fine um, thank you for having us. We really appreciated it and we really enjoyed being a part of this. Well, we really appreciate having you. Thank you so much. Everything you've shared has been so invaluable. Um, Sarah, you want to share some of the toys? Sure. One that was fun for us there is the, you know, like the baby Mozart type toys. There's one that's a cube. And um, it's a like seven inch square, you know, square cube and each side plays a different instrument. And this was great for when our kid was tiny, a baby and it's a giant button so she can push the button. Um, it plays the whole symphony, like all six instruments at the same time if you push one of the buttons and then you can push each button at a different like time and it either you can add it into the symphony or take it away. And that's really, really great for the auditory, um, you know, sensitivity and, and just discrimination. So lots of play that you can do with music with that. She used to sit on it because it was just the right height for her when she was tiny. And she would love it because she could sit on it, turn it over and then you know, sit on it and it would stop sit on it again and it would start. It's a really, really cute one. So then later as she got a little bit older, we let it kind of grow with her and um, we added Braille with cuff paint. And so it had the letter, the, the name of the instrument as well. So she got that Braille input too. Another one that's ready accessible off the shelf is the Symphony, the B Toys brand Symphony. It has like, it's a puzzle and it's a really, really well done toy in that it has like an orchestra, an orchestra stage, well, a stage for the instruments to go on. They're electronic and that it is actually a puzzle as well with like 15 different shapes. It's about the $55 range and it is sold on um, Amazon. And then each one has a totally different shape and then that has a different shape for each bottom of each instrument. It's super, super cute and it's been fantastic for years. So it's a puzzle and you can put the the instruments on the stage and then there's also an orchestra pit. So they can, it has different settings. So you can say it'll, it has a light up setting which is not accessible but everything else is. And it will light up the different instruments that are accompaniment, the ones that are the, um, the melody instruments. It's really, really well done. Um, so that's really great for learning instruments, learning sounds. It's all electronic, but also very, very fantastic. The buttons are nice and big, easy for kids to use. They can turn it off and turn it on and it plays like 13 different songs. Another one that's really cute for pre, for learning like pre-literacy and letting the kid get accustomed to this, like the shape of a brailler and the braille keys is a Mirari pop piano, M-I-R-A-R-I -R -R -I pop piano. It has six keys, just like a brailler, but it doesn't have, of course, the space bar. So it's a little musical piano. It has different settings. It looks like, um, as I'm pulling it up now, Fat Brain Toys has a version with, that is also six keys, but I think I like the shape of the other one better because 
it's more like a brailler. It has the same shape as the Perkins Brailler Keys does. So um, that doesn't require any finger strength, but they can play with it. And it does like different, it has like a funny sounds, like a goofy, you know, like crashing sounds for each one, or it just plays like through uh, music or the other one is like um, different sound effects. So it has three different settings. What we did is we unscrewed, it has little stars that pop in and out. The, it looks like the, um, the fat brain version is called, it has balls instead of stars. The other ones are like a 3D star. And I actually unscrewed the little case that it comes with. So it's like those little games that you may, you may have played with, like the little rings that you pop around on the little handheld item for those that are sighted. Um, but it has a little cover and it pops them like a pipe organ. It pops the little items up and down, but so that it would be accessible to her, I just took off the case completely. And so she could play with it and they would pop around the room and then she'd have to go find where they went. So that's a really, really cute one, especially because it has six keys, just like a brailler. So tons and tons and tons that's ready to go off the shelf um, that are super, super fun. Uh, learning resources. Leapfrog has a lot of great ones. We did for Braille learning, we could go on and on about like Braille games and Braille stuff for little kids, but we really, really like the um, Leapfrog brand and any of those that have like the Apple letters that they do an audio feedback as soon as you press the key. We just added Braille onto the, the keys. We have one that's a Scout, so it's a Leapfrog brand. And it has the little Scout um, you know, character that says, press the letter A. And she had to find the Braille letter A and then um, press it. And it would say, you did it. And, and it you know cheers for her and stuff. So that was really self-guided with Braille. And she called it her, her Braille computer when she was little, so. We could go on and on, but I want to make sure that we're making good use of everyone's time too. So, Plan um, Toys makes a lot of great ones. Um, Sarah, There's a lot I'm of companies that are just really, really fantastic. I'll hop. Go ahead. Um, in just a second, I just wanted to ask Ethan one more time to send me his email address so that we can get him his prize. I got it. You got it, Michelle, thank you. Go ahead, Sarah. So plan toys, a lot of the companies that make wooden toys um, are actually really, really fantastic. Like those, the sorters, um, either the shape sorters or the ones with multiple posts and then you can get different um, different rings for them. So like the ring stackers were fantastic. Um, that's a Melissa and Doug had one that has like five different shapes. They have like one circle, two rectangles, three triangles, and then they just kind of go back and forth. And it's just that tactile discrimination. You could always add braille to the side or texture so that they all match if you wanted to. Um, but some of those, yeah, those musical toys have been really, really, really fantastic. Bop It is a no brainer that's ready to go. And it's all, you know, actions based and you can get a, one of the Bop It's that there's a lot of different Bop It versions now. One of them does just, you can change the settings so it just does the sound effect instead of giving the instruction. Um, so that's kind of a neat one. They have mini Bop It's as well. So a little travel size version. At Target, they have a toy that's called a Poppet. And it looks like they're now selling one. The Poppet one is a round one. So if you are ever, um, I used to live in New Jersey for a few years and we played the uh, sugar packets game at diners. And um, anyway, so it's the Poppet version of that. And you have to like pop the different silicone dots. They now have one with silicone letters. It's not Braille, but it's, um, a grid instead, but you could use that for different learning things. I think that's a, I think it's a, it's the letters and the numbers in there. So you could use that as well for something for learning later or for math. 
um, similarly to like how you do a 10, a, a 100 board um, with a couple of companies that make some really, really good educational toys or tools. And we use this every week with school, especially doing school from home. Learning Resources has what's called a hundreds number board. It's a 10 by 10 grid. It's plastic and we use it every, like every time we play a game, we, we pull it out and Maeve makes up a, a different game to use with it. But it has little tiles that are not brilled. So you'd have to either braille them or you could use it not brilled and just have fun with it with your child, like using small items whether they like putting coins in and filling the whole thing because it's an actual tactile grid. The front has numbers one through 10, one through 100. And then um, the back has a grid as well, but it doesn't have any numbers on it. It's yellow. And then they sell it um, so that you can, it has all the tiles as well, one to 100. So you could braille them later with just the simple braille sticky sh label sheets. And if you have a child that picks off the labels, you'd want to use uh, a little bit of super glue so that they adhere really well and don't come off. So we use different like um, like bingo little tokens and we'll play a game called um, guess my number. So she does this at school with her teacher, with the whole class. The teacher guesses a number between you know a range of 10 and she puts one token in one of them that we've had, we have, we've braille the number inside of, and then she puts the, the, the teacher says, I've got a number between, you know, 11 and 20 and then she puts the token in each and then each child on her zoom class guesses a number and then she has to narrow it down it's nope it's not it's not 11 it's larger than 11 so she's using her you know deduction deductive reasoning skills as well so that hundreds board is really really great for the younger kids um, to play different numbers games with or um, learning their their, their math um, another one is 10 trains. So if you do um, from kindergarten up, preschool on up, they'll use, um, sighted kids would use a 10 frame, which is a grid that's like a two, two rows and five columns. Well, there's a tactile version you can buy um, and they're called 10 trains and they hook together so you can group um, different, you know, groups of 10. And I think it's a package. If you buy a package of them, you can get Unifix cubes to go in there. It's a Unifix brand. Um, Unifix cubes are fantastic. There's different versions of those as well. Like, um, so that's a really great one for counting and stuff. Um, also like pom-poms, just anything that's a different texture that they can play with is great. But a lot of those um, companies that do learning, learning and educational games have a lot that are actually pretty accessible. Sarah, do you want to talk about the dominoes game that you guys created? Oh, I'm so excited about that. So we are um, special ed director at my child's school gave, they use games to do math. And they use the 10 trains a lot. They use um, a lot of different tactile methods to do their math. All the kids do, not just her because she's blind, but they used, so her, she adapted a, a mini set of dominoes. So instead of her searching around on the domino to count each side of the numbers, it's a mini set from Dollar Tree. So they're only a dollar and you, she added puff paint dots to them. And so she can feel just like you would Braille under her one finger and she can hold it, you know, one little uh, domino tile. She can hold it one finger on one side, one finger on the other side and read it just like she would braille and say, instead of searching around and like scrubbing the top for it, um, she would just touch it and say with one finger and say that's four, four and six and four and six is 10. And so that's a really been a really, really fun thing for her. And they're so yeah. inexpensive and pretty simple. Puff oh, Bay does God. take like, to a day to two days to dry so give it a little dry time but that's a super easy one well he got a stocking stepper section as well apparently worn what fifty thousand, but not all on our no pain, um, on our list so little stocking stuffers but can he pay us off a little more a uh, little less expensive what are i would we've got what a couple five or so minutes until we need to wrap up. Kimberly, is it okay to ask maybe what other 
educational toys have been helpful for families. I know a lot of other families are schooling from home. It might be kind of nice to hear what's yeah, been helpful real, for them. Real quick, I just wanted to talk about the independence market and some of the things that you can get for your child there um, as far as um, gifts for Christmas or, um, or, or toys and games that they have. I know they have a tactile Uno or I, they do have tactile Uno. They have a tactile um, Rubik's Cube. They have um, a tactile map of the United States. You can get Monopoly from the Independence Market. You can get um, balls that make all sorts of noises from Independence Market, Braille labelers, watches. Um, it's it's really great. Um, am, I, am I on mute? Okay, sorry, I thought I was muted for a second. <laughs> Um, it's a really great resource. Right now, the um, catalog is not online, but you can call the NFB Independence Market or email them, and these wonderful people will, will tell you all about the things that they have. Um, you can even get household things like um, measuring spoons and measuring cups. Um, just so many awesome accessible um, items that you can use with your kids. Um, I'm trying to we got a tactile one. ruler that's been our favorite from there. Yeah. And also yeah, a full really page awesome. slate and stylus. It's our favorite. They, they and really also a talking thermometer. Yeah. Um, but hopefully, I, I know that there is a plan to get the um, catalog up and running online soon. Um, but for now, if there's something that you need, call the Independence Market and ask them. And they really are wonderful. And they will spend a, they will spend time with you on the phone telling you all about the things that they have. Um, so yeah, um, Sarah, what was, what was your question for our guest? Oh, I don't know if we have enough time for it, but maybe if the people will post anything on the NOPDC page, if there's certain things that have been really helpful as far as educational toys, I think that'd be great. Or maybe just post it in the in the chat. Yeah, we and have we can add it to our list. We have a few more minutes. If anybody has anything that's been. Um you know, um, helpful for, for them that you'd like to share. Um, if not, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that we're going to try to host webinars on the third Thursday of each month. Um, next month, our December webinar will be on December 17th at 7 p.m. And we're going to be talking about um, accessible holidays and craft ideas and how to deal with family. Um, during the holidays, because I know some of us have probably had to explain things to our grandparents or moms and dads and aunts and uncles about our blind kids. And we're gonna talk about, about how to do that. Um, so I'm really, looking, I'm really looking forward to that and I hope everybody can join us there. Um, if we don't have any more questions, I'll go ahead and close it up. I just wanna thank Sarah and Michelle once more, thank you so much. And thank you, Emily and Richard. Um, also, thank you. Thank you so much, Emily and Richard and 64 Ounce Games for donating the gift cards um, for, our raff, for our door prize. Um, and thank you to, for, to everybody for joining. Um, hope to see you next month, December, December 17th, 7 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.